Betty, uh, you weren't alone among area led, uh, re representatives voting no on the bill. Why did you vote in opposition? I voted in opposition because, uh, to begin with, uh, we have wonderful police protection um, in our area, which I know better than the rest of the state, but all over our Commonwealth, we have uh, police officers who are dedicated to what they do, who protect us. And I've heard from uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of them about this bill. And they've all taken the time to explain why this isn't a good thing for our Commonwealth. Um, it takes away protections from them. And uh, most of them who uh, are eligible to retire if this bill passes will do that. They will leave. And uh, we will lose a tremendous amount of experience in our police departments, not just here locally, but all across the state. And uh, I think that's very detrimental to the safeguard of the citizens who live here. And I am personally very grateful to our police officers for what they do every single day to protect us, our businesses, our homes, our children, our schools. Um, and I want them to have the fullest protection and be able to have the access to things to keep the rest of us safe. So I voted uh, no, along with 65 of my colleagues, so it crossed party lines. Uh, the bill, as it stands, if it were to go to the governor and be vetoed, uh, or be signed, we have a uh, veto-proof vote. However, it goes to a uh, conference committee. So three members of the House, three members of the Senate will sit down and iron it out, and we'll see what comes out of that, and then we'll know better how it will go forward. So police officers, I, as I understand it now, civil suits cannot be filed against them. That would no longer be the case? Well, it's, it's called qualified immunity. So uh, if a police officer um, is sued, he could lose his home, he could lose uh, whatever personal belongings he has, and uh, he shouldn't have to uh, pay that price for making a decision in the best interests of the safety of the citizens he protects. Um, the interesting thing, I think when it first came out, people didn't realize, but judges have it and district attorneys have it and many other people have it. Uh, lawmakers have it, anyone elected has it. So you're creating uh, a whole new scene and it will be very difficult to get people to fill those shoes if that were to happen. Now, normally, and I say <coughs> normally, the session would end, I believe, today. Yes. And <laughs> if the bill, if a compromise had not been voted on, it would be dead until the next session. True. But the session has been extended. <coughs> I, I don't think it's because of that, but probably because of the budget? Well, we haven't done the budget yet for the state and left many things. I mean, we didn't meet even virtually for several months. So we have a lot of things that haven't been accomplished and even dealt with or discussed. And uh, so that barrier is gone and we are in session until the end of the calendar year unless uh, the powers to be decide we're done and end it, uh, which we would have to vote for. Um, but I vision us going till the end of the year, which I, in, in all the history, I don't believe I remember this happening before. So it's very unusual. And what do you say to cities and towns who are waiting to know what kind of money they're going I to be I know. Um, it's stressful <laughs> for them, um, especially with school um, virtually ready to open soon, however they decide to open. Um, but I did receive word yesterday of a budget for schools that has just been put forward. It's certainly not um, set in cement at this point, but it was level funded, which uh, gave me great hope that we can put that forward. None of us expects um, increases, but to say it's not cut is huge. 
So um, I was very pleased to see that. 